Are you an aspiring NFL data analyst? If so, then you've come to the right place. What's up, everybody? This is Kerry. In this video, I'm going to show you how to scrape NFL data. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to scrape game log data from a very popular website. Game log data contains things like rushing yards, passing yards, first downs, time of possession, and so on. Then we're going to scrape the Vegas lines data. This particular website has things like spread and total from previous seasons for all the NFL games. This is very valuable information. Then we're going to take these two data sets and merge them together so we have one big data set. And finally, we're going to use this big data set to find a trend, the trend that I mentioned in 2024, and was very valuable and hit at a very high rate. So stay tuned for that. Now, what do we need to know in order to scrape the data? The first thing we need to know is a URL. I'm using profootballreference.com. This is an example of a URL. I'm using the Cardinals here because the Cardinals are from Arizona, and Arizona is the first state or city alphabetically among all the 32 NFL teams. Once we get to that web page, we're going to look at a table that we want to scrape the data from. And that table has an ID. The table ID is different from previous years. It's a much longer string here. You can see it down here at the bottom, table, underscore PFR, underscore team year, and so on. But that is a new table ID, and that's what we need to know to make this code work. Here is a website from profootballreference.com. And I'm picking the Cardinals in 2024 because, again, Arizona comes first alphabetically as far as the city or the state is concerned. And this is the URL right here at the top. So we can double click up here, I'm, I'm in Chrome. You can see the URL, that's where I got the URL on the slides. And then right here is the table, the game log data. If I scroll over here to the right, see all kinds of great data here, passing yards, rushing yards, total offense, kicking, punting, first downs, and so on. It's awesome. So this is the table I want to scrape the data from. And how do I know the table ID? If you go to the upper left-hand corner here on this table and right-click it and go down here to inspect, you can see over here in the developer tools, if you highlight the different HTML over here, you can see the table information here. And if I scroll up right here, table, here is a table ID. If you can see it on the right-hand side, table underscore PFR underscore team dash year and so on. I just simply type that string into my code. The table right below this is the opponent information. So for example, this is week one where the Cardinals played at Buffalo. And these are the stats for the Cardinals. If we scroll down here to the opponent, these are the stats for Buffalo. So I'm actually going to scrape both of these tables and merge these together to get all the game log data. There's a similar table for the Vegas Lions data. I'll talk about that in my code. Here's the code in the Jupyter Notebook. Now I use the Anaconda distribution for Python. The Anaconda distribution has Pandas, which I'm using here in this video. It also has Scikit-Learn, which is a wonderful data analysis tool. And if you're using Python and data analysis, you're definitely using both of those packages. There's a link to the Anaconda distribution in the description below. In this first cell, we're going to import the libraries. NumPy is MP, Pandas is PD, random and time. I push shift enter to run the cell. In the next cell, we have a list of teams here. These are the three-letter abbreviations that profootballreference.com uses for each of the teams, like CRD is for Arizona. And the reason I put them in this order, again, because I have Arizona first, Atlanta second, Baltimore third, and so on. And this is just simply a list of all those abbreviations. In this third cell, I have a renamed dictionary. A lot of those columns in that table on profootballreference.com are either missing titles or they're duplicates. For example, the first mention of yards is actually the passing yards. I'm going to change yards to passing yards. The next mention of yards in that table comes out as yards.1 when I read the HTML from pandas, but I convert that to sack yards because it's actually the sack yards. There's other yards here. Yards.2 is the rush yards and so on. So I want to rename these columns to make sure they're appropriate column names for my data. And the next executable cell down here is where we do the scraping. All right, let's get to it. This is a big cell with a lot of code, but don't worry about that. I'm going to explain each of these lines. The first thing here is I'm going to get the current time. I'm going to time my code because this scraping, I'm going to scrape 10 seasons and 32 teams per season. That's going to take some time, but I want to get the elapsed time just to see how long the scraping takes. The next thing I'm going to create here is a list of seasons. It's going to go from 2015 to 2024. The last number in the range value does not get reached, so it goes from 2015 to 2024. Now, this is my main data frame. It's called NFL underscore DF. This is where I'm going to dump all the team data and opponent data into one big data frame. We're going to first loop through all the seasons. And then when we're on a season like 2015, we're going to loop through all the teams. We're going to scrape 2015, all the data, 2016, all the team data, 2017, and so on. And this is a big first step here, setting the URL. We need to get this right to get the right web page. Let me make this a little bit smaller here. You can see the base URL here. We add onto that the team. So like CRD for the Cardinals. And then the season, I'm making that a string because for 2015, for example, I want to make that a string to go into the URL string. And then this ends in game log. This is a URL for the web page that contains the data that we want to scrape. I like printing the URL because when you scrape the data, it's going to go through all these. It's going to take some time. I like to see the URL so I can see the progress it's making. The first data that we're going to scrape here is a team game log data. So this is going to be for the Cardinals in 2015. Let me scroll up here so you can see it. And here is a table ID that we mentioned in the slides. This is a table in that web page that contains the data that we want to scrape. And here it is. This is the star of the show. PD.readHTML. This is a scraping function. This is a function from Pandas that goes out to that web page, looks at this table, and scrapes the data from that table. For this function, we need the URL. 
we have a header in row one and the attributes right here, the table ID goes right here in this little dictionary. Now this particular function returns a list of tables that match all of our parameters. Of course, we only have one table in that list, but because it's a list, we need to do bracket zero here to get the actual table out of that list. And pandas then converts this to a data frame. We're gonna call this tm underscore df for a team data frame. We're gonna manipulate this data just a little bit here. We don't want the rows in the data frame that are blank, that are subheadings, for example. I'm gonna use a column here called rank. And anywhere in the table where a row has nothing in the rank, we're gonna get rid of it because that is a subheading. On the next line, we're gonna call the rename function from pandas, and we're gonna use this rename dictionary to make sure all the columns in there are what we want them to be. In the next line of code, we're gonna do another rename here. The data that contains the actual stats like passing yards, rushing yards, and so on, we're gonna rename those and put the TM underscore in front of them as a prefix to make sure we separate the team stats from the opponent stats. So we're gonna go through all the columns from index 11 to the end and put a TM underscore in front of those column names. So this is another renaming here, but we're just simply doing that to make sure we have the team stats and the opponent stats separate. So let me just scroll up a little bit here. All the stuff here is a scraping of the team stats, a little bit of renaming here and dropping some blank rows. What we're gonna do next is do exactly the same thing, but for the opponent table. I'm gonna scroll up and show you that code. I'm not gonna talk about it, but we're just basically replacing the tm underscore with opp underscore for opponent so here it is right down here this is another scraping but this time this is the opponent information we're going to call this opponent underscore df it's exactly the same thing we did with the team underscore df so now we have the team data frame and the opponent data frame we're going to merge those side by side to make one big data frame so here it is down here now all the columns up to column 11 so this is column 0 through 10 have exactly the same information in both of these tables. So I'm gonna isolate those columns. Those are the columns we're gonna to use to do the merge. So what this does when team data frame and the opponent data frame are merged, is gonna match them up, make sure each of these games are exactly the same games. So here's another big step here. We're gonna use pd.merge to get team DF and opponent DF, and we're gonna say on columns to merge. So if you know database terminology, this is very similar to an inner join, and I'm gonna call this merge underscore DF. Now we have the team data and the opponent data in each row. Next, I'm gonna insert the season and team. I wanna make sure I keep track of each season, each team in the data frame. So what we have here in Merge DF is a data for one season and one team. And we're going to pin that data to our aggregate data frame NFL underscore DF. So this is the final step in this inner loop here. We're going to take NFL underscore DF, the merge underscore DF. We're going to concatenate those along the rows here. That's the default here is the rows. And by doing this, we're simply taking the season and team data frame and adding this onto the NFL data for one season and one team at a time. And finally, in this inner loop, we're going to pause our code because we cannot access this website more than 20 times per minute. Now I realize we only need a three second delay, but I like to randomize this between four and five seconds to make sure we stay within the limits. And just to make our scraper look like it's more like a human interaction and not simply a bot. And one of my favorite movie quotes of all time here in The Big Lebowski, the dude abides. Profootballreference.com is allowing us to scrape data. Let's make sure we abide by their rules. When all this is done, the inner loop and the outer loop, we're gonna get the end time here. Then we're gonna print the elapsed time to see how long this took. And finally, we're gonna print the info. So let me go ahead and run this cell. This is gonna be about 27 minutes or so. So I'm gonna run this cell. I'm gonna literally step away from the computer, let this run and come back and do the rest of the video. Of course, I'm gonna cut that out of the video. But let's just take a look at this and see what it looks like when we run this cell. The first one here is Cardinals 2015 game log. And then we have Atlanta for 2015. Then we're gonna get the Ravens, Baltimore in 2015, Buffalo and so on. Now, if you want to, you can simply sit here and watch this. I've done that a few times just for the heck of it, but I'm going to go ahead and step away from my computer and I'll come back in 27 minutes. Yep, I just let that run. Now, if you go up here and scroll up, this is the info, but if you look at the bottom here, the very last team in season that was scraped was 2024, the Washington Commanders. So that went through and scraped 10 seasons for 32 teams, 320 accesses to each of those data sets. That's 320 times through that loop. Now, when we look at the info here for the NFL data frame, we have 5,246 entries. That's easy to figure out. 32 teams times 16 games for 2015 up to 2020, and then 17 games for 32 teams from 2021 to 2024. That would actually be 5248, but there's one game that's missing there. That's the game where DeMar Hamlin got hurt and that game was canceled. Okay, let's check out the data here. Season, team, rank, game number, week, date, day, and so on. And down here we have the opponent name, the team points, the opponent points. Notice that the overtime column only has 304 non-null entries. That's because it has OT in that row if that game is an overtime game, but it's blank otherwise. But we're gonna fix that when we clean up the data here. But here we have team pass completions, team pass attempts, team pass completion percentage, and so on, all the way down to team time of possession. Then it starts the opponent pass completions, opponent pass attempts, and so on. Again, that's for one team. This, for example, would be the Cardinals in 2015 against the Buffalo Bills. TM would be the Cardinals. 
OPP would be the Bills. So we have all the stats here for both of those teams. I almost forgot to mention here, check this out. 1,623 seconds it took to scrape that data. That's just over 27 minutes. Okay, now let's clean the data. Again, this rank column we don't need. That does not contain any useful stats for the games. So we're gonna drop that column. And down here for the home column, the win column, and the OT column, we're gonna simply use mp.where for each of these. So all three of these are gonna be binary columns. A one if something occurs, a zero if it does not occur. When we run the cell here, we can see that the OT column, for example, is now 5,246 because it's either a one or a zero in every single row. And finally, a very important step here, save this data to a CSV. I just simply type in here NFL underscore DF dot two underscore CSV. And I'm gonna name this file NFL underscore game logs underscore 2015 to 2024 underscore new because this is a different data set than I downloaded in previous years. And finally, we put in here index equals false to make sure that the index is not saved to the CSV file. So let's go ahead and run that. Now this is a big, huge step. We've downloaded a bunch of data already, the game log data, and we saved it to a CSV file. Now let's do the same for the Vegas lines. I'm gonna go through this kind of quickly here. I didn't show the Vegas lines table on profootballreference.com. This code is very similar to the code I just showed you in scraping the game log data, but this time we're gonna scrape the data that contains Vegas lines like spread and total. This is the same as above here. The start time is gonna be the time that we start our code here. We're gonna go through the same seasons. This time I'm gonna call it VEG underscore DF for Vegas data frame. We'll go through all the seasons. We'll go through all the teams just as before. Now here's a URL for this particular table. Let me scroll up here so you can see it. It's profootballreference.com slash teams. We'll put the team in here again, string season, and then underscore lines.htm. Here's where we scrape the data here, read HTML. This has a header in the zero row. And for the attributes of the table ID is simply Vegas underscore lines. Much simpler than the game log table that we scraped earlier. We're going to do the same thing we did above. We're going to insert the season and team for the first two columns. Now this time, because I'm only scraping one table, I'm not going to have to do a merge. But I'm going to concatenate the Vegas underscore DF to the lines underscore DF. Lines underscore DF is what I call the data frame when I scrape the Vegas line data. So like we did above, we're going to use pd.concat to add us to the aggregate data frame. My aggregate data frame here is called VEG underscore DF. And of course, I'm going to pause the code here to make sure we abide by the rules. Same theme as before here. We're going to end time. We'll do the elapsed time here and then simply print the info for the Vegas data frame. Let's go ahead and run this. Again, we're going through all the seasons from 2015 to 2024 and all the teams within those seasons. So it's going to take another 25 to 27 minutes. So I'll come back here when this is all done. Yep, I did that one too. Okay, this one took 1529.9 seconds or about 25 and a half minutes. Not too bad for all this data. Now this data frame is much smaller than the game log data frame. And check this out, it has a season, a team, game number, opponent, spread it over and under, which is a total, and then the result versus the line and over under result. I'm not gonna keep these last three columns here because I'm gonna actually create my own columns for those, but I do want the first six, zero through five. So with that said, let's clean up the data. For this particular data frame, I'm gonna drop the columns from index six on. G number is gonna be GTM. This is gonna match the same column name in the game logs data frame. And over under, I'm gonna call total. And then finally, in this data frame, they actually include the regular season and playoff data together in the same table. I don't like that at all. So I'm going to use the query method to only keep games 1 through 16 if the season is 2020 or before, or if the season is 2021 and above, keep the first 17 games. This ensures that I only keep the regular season data. Let me scroll up here and let's print the info. So there it is. This is my Vegas data frame. Look at this, 5,246 rows. That exactly matches our game log data frame. Make sure we save this. I'm calling this NFL underscore Vegas underscore lines 2015 to 2024 new. So now we have the game log data and the Vegas line data both saved in CSV files. That's a lot of work, a lot of effort, and now we have all that data on our local storage. Now here is the big merge. I'm gonna take the game log data frame and read that in as NFL underscore DF. I'm gonna take the Vegas line data frame and read it in as VEG underscore DF. So now I have these two data frames here. I'm gonna merge these side by side. I'm simply gonna tack on the Vegas line data to the end of our game log data. Let's go ahead and reread these files. Now it's always a good idea to check out the shapes to make sure these are actually gonna match up here. And again, 5,246 rows for the game log data, 5,246 rows for the Vegas line data. So I know that this data is gonna match up from both of these data frames. Here is the big merge. pd.merge, NFL underscore DF, VEG underscore DF on season, team, and game number. Those three columns by themselves form a unique key. That means that each individual row is gonna have a unique combination of these three columns. And you need that to be able to execute a merge. So let's go ahead and merge these two data frames. Look at this, 5,246 rows and 89 columns. The reason why there's 89 columns is because we have 86 in the first one, six in the second one, but the three columns we use for the merge don't duplicate. So this would be 92 minus three, which is 89. So we know this is correct. Here is something I definitely like to do here. This is for future reference. I'm gonna create a cover column. One, if it's a cover, if the spread is covered by the team, zero if it's not a cover or a push. How do we know if we have a cover? 
Well, if the team points plus the spread for that team is greater than the opponent's points, and that's a cover, that's a one. Otherwise, that's a zero. A zero is going to be not cover or a push. I'm also going to add a column for the over. When is this an over? It's an over if the team points plus the opponent points are greater than the total. In that case, we put a one in that particular spot. Otherwise, we put a zero. So one for the over, zero for an under or a push. We're going to add these two columns as well. Now we have a data frame with 91 columns, all the game data, the team stats, the opponent stats, and down here, the spread, the total, the cover, and the over. This is awesome. I do like to look at a particular team, a particular season, just to make sure this works. And you can see this data here. We have the Cardinals in 2024. I have opponent X here, which I only don't need because of opponent Y. I don't need this column here. Could have just dropped that, but I'll go ahead and leave this in anyways. So this is gonna be a live in video fix here. I didn't have this in my original code which I always check my code before I make any kind of videos, but this is just a tiny little update here. I have opponent underscore X. So when we do a merge, when two columns are the same and they're not in their unique key, it calls the first column opponent underscore X for the first data frame and opponent underscore Y for the second. Well, I don't really need this column right here, but what I'm gonna do is leave it in there and just simply call this opponent underscore X OPP. So that's gonna be a rename right down here. Columns equals OPP underscore X will be OPP. And now we want to make sure that we save this data. We now have the game log data and the Vegas line data combined. So let's make sure we save this. I'm going to call this NFL underscore game logs underscore Vegas underscore 2015 to 2024 underscore new. Again, don't save the index in there. And this is a big one. That is the game log data and the Vegas data combined into one big CSV file. This is awesome. Back those files up. I always back up to a micro SD card. I always do that to make sure they don't lose anything. This is a wonderful data set to have on your local storage. Now our final step, I'm going to reload this data frame, call it NFL underscore DF. And this is a particular trend that I made use of last year in 2024. This is a secret trend that was behind my Moneyline Parlay bets. My Moneyline Parlay bets last year hit over 75%. That's ridiculous. But what I'm going to show you now is a key trend that's behind those Moneyline Parlay bets. And that's the following. All right, here we go. This is how I find these trends. I'm going to do a query method here. I'm going to look at all the teams that are at home, home equals one, and the spreads between negative 7.0 and negative 6.5. So just about a touchdown or just half a point under a touchdown. So these are heavy home favorites. I'm going to call this data frame home underscore FAV for favorite underscore DF. I'm going to count all these by simply doing the length of this data frame. Now this is a condition that we want to look at. Now the result here is did these teams win? How many of these teams that were six and a half to seven point favorites at home won the game? To get the home winners from this condition, we're gonna use a data frame we just created, the home favorites, and look at how many of those actually won. Where is the win equal to a one? We're gonna count how many of those won. Then down here, here we go. Win percentage for home teams favored between seven and a half to six and a half points. We simply take the home win count divided by the home favorite count. Oh, let me scroll up here so you can see it. And in fact, let me scroll over. I like to look at the actual counts, not just the percentage here. But when we run this cell here, this is the big payoff. Look at this. Win percentage for home teams favored between 7.5 to 6.5 points is 76.92%. That's huge. That's a huge percentage. And that was actually giving us an edge for our Moneyline Parlay bets in 2024. Hopefully this trend continues. And hopefully the Sportsbooks gives the same price as they did last year. And this trend will continue to be profitable. This was 140 out of 182 games from 10 years of NFL seasons. And we use our new data set to find this trend. The only thing that limits us from finding new trends is our imagination. That's it for the code. Hope you enjoyed this video. Good luck in your NFL data scraping. Have a good one.